Hello, this is Mike, and welcome to PHP Programming Video 62. And in this particular video, we're looking at Facebook applications using Flash Builder, and we're going to take a look at creating buttons and states. So in today's lesson, we're going to show you how to build buttons and work with the embed class, how to use the glow filter, set up states, and a little bit about tween light. Let's take a look at the application we're going to build. So we're going to add buttons to our application today, and they're rollovers, so and when they roll over, they glow. And when you click on them, you'll transition to different states. Now these buttons are custom built. Even the graphics themselves have to be built in Photoshop. So we're in Eclipse right now and let's start taking a look at the program itself. If you go to the Images folder in the Assets folder, you'll find the button graphic AA button. Let's click on that. Now we're not going to create this in Photoshop, but all we really did is create an orange square and put an embevel FX effect on it. After that, we're all ready to go. We actually, uh, as we did last time, we exported it and saved it as a JPEG. And we want to embed that inside of Flash Builder. Now, previously we've done an embed with the uh, Spark bitmap image. And all that was source at embed assets slash images slash JPEG. But this is just a little bit different. We're going to create an embed class. So in order to do that, we take the square brackets, put the word embed in it with the parenthesis source equals assets images and the AA button dot JPEG. Right following that immediately, you just declare private var button image class. And so it knows that what follows will be the class that you declare, and the name of that class is button image. So now wherever I declare button image, it'll actually grab that class because it's embedded. I don't have to worry about, in a sense, waiting for that graphic to load. When I fire up uh, Flash Builder, it's all loaded at the beginning, and it's available whenever I need it. So now that that's been done, I want to go down and show you how to create a button. Now gone are the days when it was so easy to create a button in Flash. You just dragged it to the stage and it had the four button states. We're actually going to program this from scratch and I'm actually going to put it in a group. So I'm going to have two things in my group. I'm going to have the image, that's the background image we created in Photoshop, and the number or a name, which will be a rich text object. And they'll all be enclosed inside of a Spark group. So here's my Spark group and here's my closing tag for that group here's my image and here's my rich text now the neat thing about this now the neat thing about this is that I can actually add states to the group itself so anything in the group when you roll over it or click on it will in a sense react to whatever that button state is so there's several button states in a group how do you find out what they are well just kind of hit a space bar and there's all the possible things that exist inside of a group I'm thinking I need a rollover so if I hit a space bar and go RO, here comes all the rollover events, and there's a lot of them. Look at that. Roll out, roll out effect, roll over. Look at that rollover color. Just tons of stuff you can do. And if you want to click state, all you have to do once again, hit that space bar and just start typing click, and up comes the handler. And that's how you create a click handler, for example. We're going to come back to that later. I just want to look at the roller states. So whatever's inside that group will react to the methods that I have inside that group. So I have a roll out and a roll over. Let's take a look at the rollover method first. So here's a method called button rollover. Hold down your control click and click on that. And it takes you to that method. And basically what happens is it looks at the event, the rollover mouse event, and it brings the current target filters, and that filters will be my glow is. Now what is my glow is? We'll hold the control button down, click on that. And up here in the privates tab, we have a glow filter. So my glow is is actually the name of my filter. I just declared it using ActionScript and uh, the new variable. And I'm having it be white, which is F, 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 F in hexadecimal, with a few other parameters. How do I know what those parameters are? Basically, just go in there, click, and retype that parenthesis. And up will come the code hinting for that. So, so you see you got the color, the alpha, the blur, X blur, Y, the string, the quality, and then your Boolean. So kind of use my numbers as a start, but play around with these different um, parameters in here and uh, start making your own interesting effects. Now in order to make this real, you also have to have the class. So you make sure in the import statements that you've actually imported the filters class. So with that done, whenever you uh, set up your filters, all you do is go event current target dot filters equals in brackets whatever the filter name that you've declared. And it's that easy to create a filter. Now in the rollout, basically what you do is get rid of that filter just by setting it equal to null. So now when you run this program, basically uh, when you roll over, it will glow and you roll out, it'll be set to null. Let's do that real quick and run it. So each one of these buttons is a group and in that group there is the graphic and there's also the text. 
And in this particular case for the home, I actually rotate the text 45 degrees. We're going to go back and take a look at that. All the other texts are not rotated. So you see it's working the way it is. When I roll over, it glows. When I roll out, it unglows or, or is set to null and the effect goes away. So let's go back and take a look and see how I did that rollover. So the way you can actually go back to that method or those functions is to go to design view, click on the button itself, and just go to source and whatever I clicked on will be highlighted. And you can see here in the rich text itself, I've actually rotated the text 45 degrees and that's how I got my turn on that text. So this is extremely interesting. So I actually am not creating graphics and putting them, I'm actually putting dynamic effects upon them. And that makes the programming a lot faster, especially when you need to change something on the fly and get a cool effect. So basically I had to do this for all the different buttons and place them in different places and that's what all this code is below here. And we have button 1, button 2, button 3 and so on. And there's only two methods they talk to, the rollover and the rollout. Just one more thing before we move on. I want to make sure that you understand uh, what we're doing with that embed image. The image that we embedded called button image is actually the source of the actual image in the group. So you can see each one of these uh, buttons have the same embed image in them. And that just lets that come up without having to load. It's already inside the initial preload and uh, users are not waiting around to see that graphic appear. When a new site is coming up, you avoid that by embedding. So, so let's move on to states. What I'd like to talk about now is actually creating states. And it's so easy to create states. We're actually going to create two states that this method is going to live in. Now, what is a state? Way back, I think in Flash 7 or 8, there was a concept of actually doing action scripting without keyframes. And so they had to create something like a concept of a keyframe that would hold stuff, you know, hold code or hold buttons, but not be, you know, in a sense, graphically generated. And that idea was the state. And that actually has evolved over the years. And now we have this really easy way to actually hold different things in different containers. It's just fantastic. And I'm actually going to just create the state. And then you'll understand more of what it is as we begin to work with it. So let me paste in some state code here. And it's just so easy to define a state. Right here, I'm just going to go uh, Spark Container States, and I'm going to close that. And then s state a name equals home and close that and s state name equals class and close that and I could just continue adding states if I wanted to and giving them different names holding the control alt key down and I could have as many states and hold as many different things in those different states containers and whatever whenever I went there so it's really extremely powerful and more than that it's so easy to create a state and if you come up here you can actually see with my little drop down my states are actually showing so look at that home and class and whenever I switch over though I'm actually in those states so if I go to design view and I start dragging stuff on the stage in design view if I'm in home it'll only be included in the home state if I'm in class those components would only be included in the class state let me show you an example let's drag a button over in class one there it is if I go to home it's not there if I go back to class one it's there isn't that fantastic we're actually gonna click on that button and go to the code that's highlighted and see how that's done so if you look at that button that I uh, created, there's this cool little include in method. And that include in only includes that in class one. So you're going to see that done continuously when you work with states uh, that this include method or basically typing the state name and wherever it's at will basically keep that state in the class it's supposed to be in. There's just one more thing I want to bring to your attention. And that's the whole concept is that we do not have a keyframe environment, but yet we want to create animations in tweens. There's another powerful method for creating animations in tweens. And that's a package called Tween Light. And so we're going to be bringing Tween Light into our applications and using that to create all types of cool transitions very easily with the Tween Light engine. And more is going to be said about that in the future. Let me show you how easy it is to put Tween Light in your application. Basically, go to the web, do a search on Tween Light, grab what's called the GS package, and paste that GS package into your SRC folder. When you do that, you have all the package elements to make Tween Light work. And we're going to show you how to do that in the next video. So let's review what we did so far. Basically, in this particular video, we learned how to put buttons into our application. We learned how to embed code. We learned how to embed images, create filters, use those filters to create rollover states, and use Spark groups, basically, to group together elements in a button or rollover state, such as an image or rich text. So uh, this is pretty cool stuff and extremely powerful, 
And we'll be seeing more of this as we move along. Thanks for listening. This is Mike Lively. I'll see you next time.